It's December 1st here at the West End Gun Club. Uh, it's right at 6.30, wanted to sneak in a rain session before uh, I head to my office, which is my home office. Um, even though I'm working from home, I, you know, I still have to maintain off, you know, normal business hours. So came here, sneak in a rain session because I didn't have a chance to do it during the weekend, um, with Thanksgiving weekend. Hopefully you all had a healthy and safe Thanksgiving. Um, but I wanted to sneak in my rain session now because the rest of the week, the weather is going to get pretty windy. Uh, it's already windy right now, but I heard it's supposed to get worse. Right now, I estimate the winds to be about 10 miles an hour. I suppose it's going to pick up to 20, 20 plus uh, the rest of the week. So I want to sneak in that rain session now before the weather gets really bad. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, I should get really get set up so I, don't, I can beat the traffic on the way home because there's going to be that rush hour traffic um, on my route to my house. So let's go ahead and get set up and start shooting. The reason why I wanted to come out to the range uh, this week is so I could test fire this new gun that I acquired a couple weeks ago. As you can see here, I have a Smith & Wesson Model 642. This is a J-frame. It's got a 1 and 7 8, 7 8 inch barrel, a 1.875 inches. So it's what you consider a snub nose. I guess that's what they're colloquially known as. Uh, it's five shots in the cylinder. Uh, it's 38 Special plus P. So. I uh, wanted to get one of these for a while. Uh, this is a Pro Series model. So it's basically the same thing as the air weights, uh, the same 642 air weight uh, variants. The main differences here with the Pro Series, it's not really a performance center uh, revolver, but what they did was uh, they, they uh, cut the cylinder for moon clips. So you can use moon clips, which I have one here. And I've t I, think I've, I think I left a couple at home but uh, they allow you to keep the rounds together, um, kind of like a speed loader, and I'll show it to you in a second. But, um, and the second item is that they removed the internal lock. So there's a, like a little lock or a safety mechanism, kind of like a, a trigger lock built into the, uh, the frame. They don't have that on this specific model, so that's why I picked this one up. <clears throat> I've always wanted a, a revolver. This is, believe it or not, this is my first revolver. Um, I've fired a few revolvers in the past, you know, mostly 45 long colts that were uh, that were owned by, you know, guys I know knew at the, my old range, and so I, I hung out with a lot of these guys on Sunday mornings or whatever, and uh, you know, a lot of them shot some revolvers, and you know, they shot a bunch of different guns, and some of them had some, you know, revolvers and 45 long colt, you know, single actions, and I tried them out, and they're really cool. Um, never, never really into revolvers per se. Uh, I've always wanted them, but at the same time, you know, there's other things to spend my money on. But I've always wanted one of these, uh, these small 38s because they're nice, you know, kind of concealable gun. Uh, granted, I don't have a CCW in California, but I do have them for other states and where I travel. So it's nice to have an option other than my Glock 26 and 27, which I did bring with me today. Um, not even sure if I'm going to fire them, but I just brought them there. Um, I might actually run them the chronograph because uh, I never chronoed those guns with uh, the defensive rounds that I use. Um, but it's nice to have one of these small 38s, really cool uh, revolvers in terms of reliability. They're, you know, historically very reliable. Relatively easy to understand and shoot. They're intuitive, no safety, just, you know, pull the trigger. This has no external hammer, so it's all internal hammer, nothing to snag up on, but that means it is a double action only gun. So which means, uh, if this is unloaded, when you fire, it'll, uh, when you pull the trigger, it cocks the hammer and then fires. The one bad thing about this specific firearm is um, the trigger pull is very heavy. Uh, my trigger pull gauge, my cheap RCBS uh, gauge, only goes up to eight pounds and it definitely exceeds eight pounds. I would estimate it to be around at least 10 to 11 pounds, if not 12. But believe it or not, the trigger is easy to pull. Um, it's clean. 
and you can kind of predict it you can kind of stage it you'll know if you pull slow and that i'm cocked right now and anymore i'll just drop the hammer so it's kind of easy to understand how to shoot this gun um and pull it you know how to how to prep the trigger but anyway let's go ahead and just uh test this out i do have um, a couple box of this Norma range and training ammo that I found online, which is insanely expensive right now. Um, <laughs> it's probably the worst time to buy a new gun uh, in a cartridge you don't already reload for because ammo is just like so hard to find. And if you do find it, you're paying well over normal prices. But I do have two boxes of 50 rounds. So it's 100 rounds total of this Norma range and training. This is a 38 special, 158 grain. They're uh, full metal jackets, supposedly 968 feet per second which may be slower out of the short barrel who knows and i did get two boxes of critical defense um 25 rounds per box this is the horny critical defense 38 special plus p 110 grain ftx 8 ftx sorry i don't i have my distance classes on and uh i don't know what these are chrono at i think it claims shoot claims 997 but we'll see sorry yeah, 997, no, 1090 at the muzzle. 997 to 50 yards. But I got two boxes of that, we'll just try those out. I do have bullets coming in. I was able to score a 50, a 500 count box of 110 grain um, hollow point Hornady XTPs, not yeah, XTPs, they're hollow points. I think they're XTPs, I don't know. No, Winchester, sorry, Winchester hollow points, 110 grain um, for a decent price from Brownells. I'll just reuse this brass, but I need to get dies, which I'm waiting on because they're back ordered. So we'll see where I go there. Um, got my chronograph set up and uh, we'll run some test rounds. I'm completely flinching that like I I was shooting to the right up uh, it's feeling I'm not getting a good grip I guess because you know you're missing the pinky it's kind of like a short it's kind of like a short uh, grip almost like a Glock 26 but this is my first I think I need to hold low on the on the sight because i think i'm holding it too high all right let's try it again really flinching that right now in my first rounds this gun one cool thing about revolvers is it's easy to pick up your brass on like semi not in the dirt for them so that's cool it appears that the velocity is really slow on these ones these 150 great 158 grainers it's only uh, 639 feet per second, which, unless I mess with my setting, no, it's feet per second. 639 feet per second. That's really slow. Granted, these are 158 grains firing out of a short barrel. All right, let's try again. Kind of just want to close, shoot my eyes closed to see if it's just me. Okay, it's really high on the gun or the sight, so I need to aim low. I mean, you don't have an adjustable rear sight on this thing, so you kind of just have to play it by ear. And I do have it at roughly seven yards. So it's really hitting high. I'm about three inches up on target. I'm really trying to prep this trigger like it's a, trying to feel that last stage, kind of like a two stage. All right, I'll show what it looks like on camera here. So at the risk of embarrassing myself, here's my target. I dipped, I dipped my first round through this gun 
very low but here's where it tends to be at right at this level i pulled a couple of these shots this was high but i'm aiming here at the a and we're hitting a solid three to four inches high at seven yards so it's kind of something you're gonna have to aim at the, at the belly at somebody at seven yards to kind of get a good shot but five rounds one two three four five these are my last five here once i got everything squared away i try to feel that trigger these are my first five rounds that was a sixth round i just kind of pulled earlier when i was just doing a single round test but so aim at the a seven yards four inches high so uh, let's fire a few more rounds or run through the box a little bit just kind of get a feel for the gun and uh see what the velocities come out to <clears throat> so the one thing i did pick up just kind of learning how to shoot a revolver it's kind of it's a different different than shooting a semi because the semi is easy with line up your thumbs against the against the side of the frame left you know your support thumb your trigger thumb on top of your support thumb but it's kind of the opposite with a revolver you're gonna you're gonna fully grip with your shooting hand and then kind of bring your bring your thumb over your shooting thumb kind of just to grip that it's kind of a unique thing or you know just something you got to learn how to do it's a little nuance try to get myself close to the chronograph here so it actually picks up the rounds So that's an interesting thing with revolvers too. You can actually use revolvers as a good training aid for, to help isolate flinch, right? Because you put four rounds or, or one round or two rounds less in, a cylind in the cylinders, you can help train somebody who's a newer shooter to show them where they're being deficient on. Granted, I think teaching somebody on a revolver may or may not be a good thing right now in modern days because I think semi autos are just easier to hold, especially if you get a small frame a slim frame like a 1911. Um, I've taught, I've taught a female to shoot off a 1911. Uh, that was her first gun that she ever fired. And I used target loads, so they were very soft, and her hands are small, but she was able to grip that better than a Glock because it's a slim. It was a slimmer frame than a Glock because the Glock is double stacked, and she liked the 1911. Granted, I don't think she would have liked shooting full power 45 hardball, but I had some nice light, 200 grain semi wad cutter. Um, target loads using clays with a nice uh, recoil spring and so it was nice for her to shoot I figure I should show you the moon clips since I mentioned them early in the, earlier in the vlog but I'm not sure if you can see it on camera here but the gun is cut the cylinder has got this bevel cut in the in the middle for these things called moon clips and for those of you we're kind of noobs like me um, with revolvers. It's just these little star looking deals that will hold ammo, kind of like a speed loader. So you hold all the rounds together. So I got um, these five rounds in a moon clip. And so what that will let you do is let you drop them in. If you were having to speed load for some reason, I'll probably show you, just drop my, uh, if you just drop that in there like that, it's just faster to do, you know, if you're a little bit more trained on reloading, but then it's just faster to drop in the rounds that way. So kind of cool. Um, the gun came with three and it one just flew in the wind. <clears throat> Bear with me here. So it came with these three of these. I have, I left two of them at home, but here's just one of them. They're actually made by TK Customs. I had to order five more. They're expensive by the way. They're, I think five was $40, which is insane. Um, but I ordered five of these because with the ones that came with the gun, this normal brass actually wouldn't fit. I could fit four and the fifth was too tight. And they actually, TK Customs has a little thing online on their website to tell you like how, how tight it should be and like well, how loose it needs to be. And this one's about kind of tight already. I mean, it needs to have a little more looseness than this just so it doesn't bend the clips when you're got all five loaded in or if you have a seven rounder, all rounds loaded in there. 
But I ordered these ones, which are a little bit wider cut, and supposedly they're for critical defense, but critical defense actually falls out. They won't hold in this one that I bought from TK Customs after the fact. The ones that came with the gun, these blued or finished ones from TK Customs, the critical defense fits in these perfectly. So I have two loaded at home. They're just sitting at home on my, on my desk. <clears throat> but, but I figure I'll just show you how these work. Um, quickly on camera, let me just set my uh, chronograph up to get these rounds. As again, just drop in the rounds. You can get them in there. And there you go. You get rounds off. And then you can speed load, right? So let's say you're empty. You, I don't know if you have this in your pocket or something. You could just drop them in there. And you load it faster than I am, I am on camera. But ideally, you can speed load it and you get your rounds off on target. Voila, pretty cool. Again, they're kind of expensive though, 40 for five. Um, that's eight bucks, uh, eight bucks uh, uh, moon clip, which is almost as much as a magazine, like a 1911 mag, I mean, you get those for 10 bucks, right? I haven't bought a 1911 mag in a while. I think Glock mags, you can get the Magpul ones for 12 bucks. So. Anyway, just wanted to show those off on camera. It's starting to get a lot windier right now. Um, some of my stuff started blowing away. Uh, but I want to go ahead and hurry up and test at least 10 rounds as critical defense through the chronograph. Um, for some reason, my chronic, my magneto speed is not wanting to record to a new series. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to tack it on to this, this series is letting me record to, and I'll figure it out at home. I wonder if the memory card is corrupt. Probably needs to be formatted because that's been formatted in forever. Um, but let's go ahead and get some rounds through this with the Hornady Critical Defense 110 grain FTX. I think this wind definitely scared people off because I have not heard any gunshots other than my own this morning. And usually on a Tuesday, there's people here. That was five. Whew. So running through that, looks like we're 875, 885, 878, 879. This is pretty consistent. Well, 943, that one's kind of high. 866, 885, 962. It's a pretty good spread but definitely over 900 feet per second, which is closer to the advertised velocity, which is 1050 or 1090 out of this, versus this 158 grain, which was supposed to be 968, and I was only hitting 680 feet per second. Here's a look at the target, 10 rounds of the Hornady Critical Defense 110 grain FTXs, aiming at the A, hitting about an inch, two inches high, but two inches to the left. Um, not sure what's going on there, but yeah, this is actually a pretty good group, 10 rounds, uh, kind of better than the Norma ammo, uh, although I am concerned that I have, I am shooting to the left, Third, then I'm going to use my eyes on the sights, but not bad. My first impressions of this gun, uh, fairly positive. Uh, it's uh, definitely something to get used to, uh, in terms of the grip and the hold on such a small gun. I may get 
thicker grips though because it feels like I could use a little bit more around there in terms of the uh, the way it feels especially when you're trying to close on it um, it'd be nice to at least have a little bit more surface area to grip on so I might get a thicker grip which is counterintuitive of a carry gun but I think this kind of needs it we'll see I've seen some grips online uh, I don't know if I want to do the extended one where it adds a little the pinky at the very bottom I don't think I'd do that though uh, moon clips I mean, not much to say about those. Really haven't speed loaded uh, during this rain session, but something to get used to or try to learn how to use correctly. Um, I had to close my case up because the wind blew it open and threw my stuff around. Um, this normal bra this normal ammo, I don't know, it's pretty harsh compared to the critical defense. Just shooting that 158 grain round is kind of a lot of, a lot of heft to it. So you move a lot of mass even though it's a slower speed. I think the faster, I think a lighter bullet's probably better for this gun, it's just easier to control. It's not as harsh on the hands, but uh, we'll see. I do have a 110 grain bullets coming in, the Winchesters, and assuming I get my dies in, I can reload for those. I'll probably run tight groups since I have lots of tight group and that's a suitable powder for 138 special, or 130, 38 special. Um, but yeah, look for more of this in future vlogs. I'm gonna mess around with this when I have the opportunity. Um, I'm going to put a, make a vlog article or a, a vlog, a blog article. I'm going to do a write up on this gun. Uh, cause you know, it's not a new gun, but it's, it's a classic gun and it's my first revolver. So I should probably do a little write up on it. My perception of it, um, especially compared to my, my semi-autos, which I did not shoot today. I just don't have the time to shoot it, but, um, I have my, uh, what do I have here? This is my Glock 27, which I never shoot really. Um, it's kind of one of my first handguns. This is the uh, Circa 2001, 2001, 2002, 2000. I don't know. It's got the, the, the origin of that finish from the early 2000s, which is really good. This is not worn. I've had holster wear, hold, the holsters, and this finish is not worn away. And I'm just amazed by the quality on the finish in these compared to modern Glocks. Like my, my, uh, my newer Glock 19, I have a newer Glock 19 Gen 3, and that finish is just tore up from holsters. But this is really good, and the trigger on this is excellent. I mean, I, I don't remember what I replaced this with, but this trigger is just great. It's like, it's the best trigger out of all my Glocks, and I can try to replicate this trigger in my other, my 19s and my, my, my 26. I just can't get it to be this way, and so I've, even though I don't use this gun for anything, I don't want to get rid of it because it's it's a good gun. I mean, it's just the finish is still good. I'm mean, with all the holster wear and leather holsters too, because leather tends to do some funky, has some funky finish. Uh, it causes some weird finish wear unique to leather holsters, and I don't have any of that. Um, it's got the plastics. Is this plastic? I think these are plastic sights. No, these are the steel sights. This is before they went to plastic. So steel was kind of a little bit more normal on the Glock. So I had the steel sights on here. Yeah, this is a great Glock 27. So I don't think I'll get rid of it. Um, and I got this holster from SHOT Show. Allen gave it to me, uh, the company Allen gave it to me for free. Um, don't know why they gave it to me for free, but they gave it to me for free at SHOT Show. So I have this in here. And as I keep this in my, my desk drawer. Um, yeah anyway that's it for today um this is the smith and wesson model 642 the pro series and i don't think i have the actual model skew on here is it on here i'll have to post that in the video description oh here it is 178042 this is the pro series model model 642 pro series with moon clips 178042 um yeah you can find them um, I got this at a local gun shop in my area. They just had it in the case, and I was looking for this one. I said, hey, you know what? I'm here. You got it in stock. I'll buy it. So that's how I wound up with it. Anyway, that's it for today. Today is December 1st, uh, Tuesday here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog. There's a range officer behind me. They're doing some maintenance today.